Hi there, this is Dave and welcome to our review of Fuga, Melodies of Steel released digitally only for the PC, PlayStation, Switch, and Xbox consoles. This is the latest game in the long-running Little Tail Bronx series, which includes gems such as Tail Concerto for the PlayStation and Solo to Robo for the Nintendo DS. Each game in the series has decidedly different gameplay, but keeps some mainstays, such as a beautiful world filled with animalistic characters. The first thing that you're going to notice are the absolutely beautiful graphics in 2D style. This looks very much like a Vanillaware game. And while the world is colorful, the characters themselves are depicted in sepia tones, while the story is told in still vignettes. Most of the characters, though, are pretty much straight-up, one-note, anime tropes. And while all the dialogue is voiced, it's not in English. This irked me to no end because the only voice acting available is Japanese and French. Imagine if Valkyria Chronicles and Grandia had a baby. That's what you're getting here in a nutshell. Fuga follows a group of children whose village was attacked by the Burman Empire, and the children, the lone survivors, heard a mysterious voice who led them to an ancient but technologically advanced tank called the Tyrannus, which they utilized for the rest of the game. All of your fighting, exploration, town building, and character development will be confined to this tank. The war-torn land looks very reminiscent of Europe during World War II, and you'll be rolling across picturesque fields, farmlands, and villages while you chase down the evil German, or wait, I mean Burman, Empire. Yeah, it's pretty obvious what they were going for here. Now, while I normally hate a linear game, I do feel that it works quite nicely here. This is a no-frills, no-fuss JRPG, which is actually a lot of fun. Fuga utilizes a chapter system, and each chapter is decidedly on rails. Except for a few forks, there are no deviations here. As you steamroll your way through the chapters, you'll encounter healing spots, items, battles, and bonding event opportunities. Then, you might hit a fork, where you can choose the easy, normal, or hard route, with the more difficult routes obviously having better experience and rewards. This is important, though, because don't let it fool you. This game can be hard. There is no backtracking for grinding, there's no free healing after a battle, or even going into a menu to heal up. The only healing that you're going to get is at the end of a chapter. So, if you do choose to take the hard route, you may not be powerful enough for the boss at the end of the chapter. So this is also kind of like a roguelike, where you have to manage your inventory, health, and magic quite carefully. However, precisely because there is no grinding, I enjoyed the challenge offered, and I reveled in its straightforward simplicity. The battle system is where the game really shines, though. Upon each encounter, your characters and the enemies will be put on a timeline similar to Grandia. Each person will take their action when they reach the end of the line. However, if you hit an enemy's weakness, you'll delay their turn. Essentially, each character and enemy has a color. Blue, which deals less damage but is very accurate. Yellow, which is an all-rounded attack. And red, which is less accurate but deals a lot of damage. There is no guesswork and the game flat out tells you which color you need to hit in order to delay their turns. Also, certain enemy types are weak to certain colors, such as fast flying types being weak to blue machine guns, while slow tank types are weak to red cannons. This is beautiful in its simplicity. While many other games artificially bloat their combat system with way too many complicated antics, Fuga is simple and to the point, and I can appreciate that because there is nothing worse than putting a game down for a month or so only to come back to it and then forget how the combat system works. I'm looking at you lately, Tails Games. At the conclusion of each battle, you'll be graded based upon how well you did, how quickly you dispatched the enemies, and how much damage you took. The higher your grade, the more experience and better items you will receive. So it really does behoove you to learn the combat system as quickly as possible, not only for the grade, but to survive the longer chapters because remember, unless you hit a heal point on the map, there is no healing between battles and inventory management is at a premium. Each of your characters has their own strengths, weaknesses, special skills, and attack color. And you can have three characters on each cannon, then another backup character. Now, the first character is the one who will do the attacking, while the backup character can use link attacks and support abilities. Therefore, it's important to use bonding events to best advantage so characters who synergize with each other can grow and bond the most. As you traverse through each chapter, you'll reach a bonding event point where you get to explore the Tyrannus with 20 action points to use. 
Everything that you do here will take up a certain number of points, but will also increase your experience as well as your bonds. You can just simply chat, or you can do some fun things like farm, fish, rest, laundry, or explore. And in a move that seems to be made just for me, you can actually skip the bonding event dialogue sequences. Thank God, because I really don't care about how they like their potatoes cooked, what ribbon looks cutest in their hair, or whose boobs are bigger. I skipped that shit so fast. Since there's no grinding, the designers did add a failsafe to the game, an ultimate weapon called the Soul Cannon, which will immediately destroy the boss, however, it does come at a high cost. One of your characters will permanently die if you use it, and honestly, I never had to, but it was nice to know that the option was there if I did need it, especially because more and more throwaway characters will join your team as you progress through all the chapters. Not only are the chapters on rails, but the world map is too. At the start of each chapter, you're going to be presented with the world map and an opportunity to enter the town where you can trade for items. There's no currency here, it's all bartering, which makes inventory management even more paramount. You can also talk to a few people, but again, it's on rails, so once you leave the town, you can never go back. All in all, this game is not for everyone. It is incredibly linear, and there is a lot of resource management. But with all that being said, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with it. At first, I didn't think that I would, but I soon fell in love with the simple combat, the challenge, the management, and learning new skills and link attacks with the characters. This is a very fun throwback to a much simpler JRPG where you don't need to be glued to a guide to get the best ending or search high and low for hidden side quests. It's just a relaxing journey, and there's simplicity and beauty in that. Well, that's it for my review of Fuga, Melodies of Steel. How do you feel about the game? Do you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video and what I do here on the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon, heading on over to Twitch for some streaming, or joining the Discord to chat and hang out. The links to them can be found in the video description. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.